user authentication in Kubernetes may be arguably not the most fun thing in the world. Uh, probably user management in general and all general authentication. But it is ridiculously crucial. It's literally the difference between you having the ability to access a Kubernetes cluster and you not being able to. It's the difference between the context that you have set in your kubeconfig giving you the ability to access a Kubernetes cluster or not. So overall user authentication and management is crucial because without it, there's not much you can do in any environment. Now here's the thing about managing Kubernetes users. Kubernetes out of the box doesn't have a way to create users. It doesn't have a way to create groups to manage all of that. Why? Because it's not the job of Kubernetes. Remember, Kubernetes is an orchestrator. It does give you the ability to create service accounts, but that's because service accounts are needed for pods to run. So it's an actual thing inside of Kubernetes or an actual resource that's truly needed to get all this stuff up and running. But general authentication, that's not what Kubernetes is about. And that's why, you know, the whole OpenID Connect standard or OIDC is so important. And there are a ton of different tools that you can use. Azure Active Directory, AWS IAM, Okta. There are a bunch of different ways that you can create authentication methods for Kubernetes. Now, this isn't considered native, but the closest from you know a native perspective would be creating a Linux user. So you can create a Linux user, you can generate a key, you can generate a CSR, and then with that, you can use something like OpenSSL to generate a cert for the user. And then that cert plus the user can be embedded into a cube config, and then that can be used for your authentication to a Kubernetes cluster. Here's the thing, who wants to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I know I don't. And because of that, I'm going to use an easier method. I'm going to use some OIDC standard. But here's the thing. There are some pros and cons with that as well. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to dive in and we're going to take a look at Azure Active Directory. Now, I know a lot of people watching this may not use Azure, but that's not really the purpose. The purpose of this video is to showcase a, whichever OIDC solution and portainer to see what's kind of easier to manage and to create users and teams and groups and all that stuff. So if you don't have Azure Active Directory, it's fine. If you've used any other before like AWS, IAM, Okta, something like that, you're gonna see where I'm going with this video. So with that, let's go ahead and dive right into the hands-on goodness. Okay, so first let's take a look at what this looks like from an AKS perspective. So if I go to Kubernetes service and then I click on AKS, now do keep in mind, I'm gonna do this for AKS, but you can actually use Azure Active Directory outside of Azure. So for example, if you have a GKE cluster, you can use Azure Active Directory for authentication there too. So from the AKS cluster, if I go to access control and IAM, I can do a few things. Number one, I can view my access. So as you can see, I'm signed in right here and this is what I have. I have a full service administrator permissions. Next, I can also check access of others. So for example, if I wanted to type in M Levan, I can see my level of access. If I type in another user, I can see their level of access. And as you can see, this particular user doesn't have any role assignments at all. However, what I can do is I can add a user. So if I click on the add button and if I click on add role assignment, I can give it whatever type of permissions I want. In this case, think RBAC. So these would essentially be roles. So if I click on owner, I can go to members and then I can select a member and you know, whichever member I want, I can click select and then I can review and assign. And now this user is going to have access. So if this user is logged into the AZ CLI and they try to do something like AZ AKS get credentials against this AKS cluster, they will have the ability to access it from an authentication standpoint. Now there's a few things wrong with this. Number one, to use this type of solution, you need to already have like Azure or AWS or Okta or something like that. You need to have the authentication solution available. Next, you have to set it up across multiple environments. So if you have multiple Kubernetes clusters, you have to set it up across all those environments. Now something outside of Azure, maybe Okta or something like that, you would have to pay for it. So if you have to pay for it, then, well, you know, that's just a solution that you're paying for just for authentication and that's it. It doesn't come with anything else. 
And then finally, th this whole kind of solution, you know, this is great. You know, we can go to access control in the resources. We can go to Azure Active Directory. We can manage everything from this perspective, but it does leave a little something to be desired from a central solution perspective. So now let's head over to Portainer. All right, so I'm in my Portainer environment here and under settings, I'm gonna click on users and I'm gonna create a new user, my test, give it a password, confirm that password. I can confirm if I want it to be an administrator or not and then select the team that I want this user to be on. So I'm gonna click create user and now we can see that user is created. Next, I'm gonna to go to teams. I'm gonna give this team name K8S test. I'm gonna take my mic test user and make it the team leader, create team, and boom. <laughs> so, so just like that, we have the ability to manage users and teams and even roles, which we've already looked at in the RBAC video and blog post, very easily in a central location for all of our Kubernetes clusters, which makes things way easier. So like, because our Kubernetes clusters are here already, we don't have to worry about connecting this solution to that solution from an authentication perspective. Everything's here already, it's already managed. So in my opinion, if you're using Portainer, you might as well use this type of solution. If you're not using Portainer, maybe think about Portainer for user management and for team management because it does make things easier. However, if you already have an environment set up where you're using something like Azure Active Directory, it probably doesn't make sense to just switch to Portainer just for that. You should think about Portainer for all of the other features as well, like you know overall cluster management, because it does make things way easier. We saw how fast it was to be able to create users, to be able to create teams, and ultimately to be able to attach them to a Kubernetes cluster itself. It makes it way easier.